Elementary music teacher friend, you love what you do, but you might feel unappreciated and, in fact, unseen some days. You may even feel like you're on a music teacher island and just want to connect with other music teachers who can relate to both your struggles and wins when it comes to teaching elementary music. I get you and understand completely the feelings you're having. That's why each and every week, the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast will provide you with solo and guest episodes that will help you realize you're not alone in your music teaching journey. Throughout each episode, my goal is for you to be able to walk away with actionable steps and ideas to help you feel like you're ready to take on the new week with whatever challenges may be thrown your way. Hi, I'm your host, Jessica Peresta, and I'm so glad you're here. Whether you're at home, in your car, in the shower, or wherever else you're listening, grab your cup of coffee or whatever other beverage is nearby and listen in to the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. Well, hey there, music teacher friend, and welcome back to the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. You are listening to episode 119, and it's about five ways to help your student teacher thrive. Now, I wanted to share in this solo episode what helped me when it came to guiding my student teachers that I had come through my classroom doors. In fact, I had five student teachers, and not all at the same time, of course, but it was so fun. This is actually one of my favorite things ever is having student teachers because I love mentoring teachers. Hello, I started this whole podcast for that reason. And it is so awesome having them come and observe you and then take over teaching while you know, you get to still guide them and help them before they start in their own classrooms. It is also a little bit intimidating. And if you are listening to this, and you're about to get your first intern student teacher, or you know you will be getting one or you're not sure yet or you want one in the future or whatever, the reason I think it's awesome getting a student teacher is because it helps you or me grow as an educator as well. Because when you're mentoring others, it completely helps you grow because you can always learn new things by those you're mentoring just like they're learning from you. And not only that, it's awesome being able to pour in to these college students. I am so excited because now I'm shifting to having some interns working with me from college in the fall in my music education business, and I cannot wait. And so the same tips I'm sharing with you in this episode are the same exact tips I used in my classroom or online. So if you're listening to this and you're like, yeah, right, well, I am going to get an intern, but I'm not going to be able to do half this stuff because I'm just going to basically be communicating with this person on Zoom. These strategies will help you. I promise. So listen, don't, don't just tune me out because you're like, it's not a typical school year. I can't do what I would normally do. I get it. And if you're listening to this and you have never had an intern and it's overwhelming to you and you're like, uh, I don't even know where to begin, then this episode is for you as well. So keep listening, all right? So the first student teacher you have, before I get into my five tips, I want to say it will be intimidating, not just for you, but for them. They all of a sudden went from college, you know, sitting in classes, participating in probably their elementary music ed classes, and, you know, going over all the music methods and going to different practicums where they observe teachers teaching for a few hours here or there, but they've never done a full semester of uh, uh, being placed in a classroom to take over teaching. Now, I do realize with music education, most states, I I mean, honestly, most of the time, you're certified K through 12, which means your student teaching placement will be half of a semester, right? Like for me, my experience, I had half a semester at an elementary school. And then the other half of a semester, I did middle school and high school band. I kind of did both because it was a very small school that had you know, basically one of those schools that has all the buildings right in a row because it's a tiny district. So I got the opportunity to do both. But anyways, um, so it's going to be intimidating for both of you is what I was getting at. Not just for them, but for you also. Okay. And especially if it's your first time, all of a sudden you have another adult in the room with you all day and they're in there staring at you, asking you questions, wondering what you're doing, because you know it's totally different going from reading about teaching in a textbook or online or in a classroom environment in a college setting to actually experiencing it. 
completely different. And those of you listening who you're like taking that advice for yourself, you're like, oh, hello, that was me going into my actual classroom from learning about how to do it. Yes, I, this is the same, okay? But for a student teacher, it's intimidating and it's overwhelming. So we're going to talk about ideas for how to move past that. It's an adjustment, especially for us introverts, okay? All of a sudden, you're used to being the only adult in your classroom except for observations and for talking to teachers, of course. But all of a sudden, you have the student teacher in there who will be asking you tons of questions and will be by your side all day and will be basically having the same plan time and lunch time as you and be teaching right along with you. And you're going to have student teachers who rise to the occasion, some who just immediately just get it and they're like there and they're on it and they're prepared, and some who will need a little or a lot more guidance and help. So you're going to experience, you kind of don't know what student teacher you're going to get until they show up, all right? Um, I also want to say, I still haven't even gotten to my five points, so hang in there. Whatever the case may be, whatever type of student teacher you encounter or you get to help guide and mold and, you know, uh, mentor, you these five tips I'm going to share, they will help your student teacher thrive. There's, of course, more ideas I could share than five, like way more. But these are my favorite ideas I actually share with any teacher, any music teacher that's asked me, what do I do with the student teacher? These are the usually the tips I share, Okay. I also want to say that your student teacher, depending on what college or university they come from, they're going to have different guidelines and possibly a rubric for you to follow along to assess them, just like you assess your students. And so you need to be aware ahead of time. And when you get this these this paperwork handed down to you by the university or that college professor you're working with, you need to kind of be aware of like, what are they expecting this student to do to be able to graduate college, right? And just be aware that ahead of time that every student, you know, even neighboring colleges down the street, one student's expectations will be different than the other one at the other college. So be aware of what they, what fulfillments do they need to earn their college credits and to be able to graduate because that's usually the very final class. So make sure you're just aware that um, speaking of adults in the classroom, also be ready for your principal to be in your room a lot more because they will be kind of wondering what's going on in there. But honestly, a lot of times they will also need to observe this student teacher too, um, as well as the college professor will be coming in the classroom a lot more. So basically your classroom will have an extra person in it at all times for the duration of that student teaching placement. So just be aware of that. It may cause a little bit more stress on your life, but it just you'll get used to it. You're like, oh, good, another adult's in here. Okay, why not? Everybody just come on in. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's get started with the five tips. Number one, this is something I got from my cooperating teacher way back in like the 1800s when I student taught. <laughs> just kidding, but seriously not. But oh, they invited me to meet them for lunch. And I love that idea because this is before I even stepped foot into her music classroom. I got invited to go to lunch with her. And I, at first I was like, wait, why? And then I realized she did it to get to know me. Like she wanted to know my personality. She asked me questions about what did you do in college? What's your instrument? What did you, what do you, why did you want to become a music teacher? Different questions to kind of get to know who I was before I even stepped foot into her classroom. It also to make me feel comfortable with, so it was not the first time we met. The first time I walked in her classroom wasn't the first time we met, you know? And so I love that idea. So go to coffee or invite your student teacher, once you know who they are, to meet you before they even step foot into your classroom, whether that's in person or virtually. Let's say you are teaching virtually and you've been assigned a student teacher. Don't worry about that part, okay? I mean, worry about it, of course, but when it comes, we're just talking about meeting them right now. So set up a Zoom call. Say, hey, let's have a virtual coffee date. And just the questions I'm going to tell you right here to ask this student teacher, you can still do it virtually, okay? So get to know them a bit. At their personality, just from talking to them, you kind of get to know their personality a little bit. Are they outgoing? Are they more introverted? Do they like to talk? Are they not a talker? Can you just tell they're shy? Um, what do they hope to get out of their student teaching placement? Ask them that. And maybe they're going to say, I don't know, because they don't know what to expect. Or they may have a whole list of things <laughs> they're wanting to get out of it. Just ask that question and see what they say and take notes about that so you can help them develop into the teacher they're wanting to become. How long is their placement? Usually it's half a semester. 
that normally is how long it goes, but just ask them, hey, so when you walk into my classroom, when is your final date, just so I'm aware, and just ask them a question. And then maybe they're going to even say, I'm not sure. So you both need to kind of find that out, right? So ask them if they have a teaching style. They may not know that, and that's okay. A lot of teachers still don't know what your teaching style is, right? We've talked about that a lot on this podcast, but ask your student teacher, do you have a teaching style from learning about it in college and observing other teachers in their classrooms? Do you maybe have a, an idea of what your teaching style might be? And just have a conversation about it. Their philosophy of education, do they have, what did they write in their philosophy of education that they had to write in college? What did they put in it? What are, What is their philosophy of education? What are they hoping to do in the lives of their students when they get their own classroom one day? Why were they assigned to you? Did they choose you? Was it a random placement? And it doesn't matter. It's not like you're asking that to be like, oh, well, you didn't choose me then. No, just you're just kind of wondering, like, did you choose me for a certain reason? Or were you assigned here? And if so, I just want to know just just so I can know. And you don't have to ask that question if it's uncomfortable. I'm just giving you some ideas of what I have asked. And then why they wanted to become a music teacher. So why? I love asking this question to the teachers in my Harmony membership. I love asking this question when I go uh, when I run my free challenges. We talk about this all the time is remembering your why. Why did you become a music teacher? And a lot of times as you get into it and get into the logistics of it all and the craziness of it all, sometimes we forget that question. So I love asking student teachers this question, why did you become a music teacher or why are you becoming a music teacher? So because it's fresh and it's exciting and they're so super excited and I want them to hold on to that answer as they get into teaching. Then the cool thing is this is a conversation. So it's not just you asking questions of these student teachers. I want you to answer the same questions you asked to them. Let them get to know you. Why are you in, why are you teaching music the way you're teaching? What is your philosophy of education? Has it changed as you've gotten going with teaching? Has your teaching style changed as you've gotten into teaching? Or have you changed schools? Or have you adjusted it a bit based on what you've learned or seen or experienced? Talk to them about all these things. Talk to them about why you became a music teacher when you could have been anything else. And how has your personality helped you thrive in your classroom? Tell your student teacher that. Explain to them why you are teaching the way you're teaching in your classroom, okay? So that was number one, is all about getting to know them before you even start guiding them as a student teacher, all right? Number two, This is a big one and probably one of the biggest ones, all right? I want you to know that your student teacher will not do things the same way you do. Whoa, this is something that I I really had to realize when my student teachers came into my classroom and I started giving them a little bit more leeway of teaching and and I was like, oh my goodness, they're not they're not starting class the way I do and they're not transitioning the way I do and why are they having the kids sit like that? And it's actually a good thing right? It's actually a good thing that they're coming in and kind of changing up the game a little bit and breaking up the redundancy of stuff. And your students are getting to experience learning music in a classroom management system probably in a whole different way. And you know what's awesome is that's actually a good thing. You have to kind of let go of the reins a little bit and know that it took you forever, right, to establish your classroom management system in the way of doing things in your classroom. But when your student teacher came in or comes in, if it's in the future, that they will, of course, you have your system and they're probably going to do things the way you do. Like when it comes to your things that go on in your classroom with getting the kids in the door and maybe they're going to go ahead and follow your classroom management system because they're learning right along with you. But you're going to also notice that they come in with their own ideas and they're going to be like, hey, can I try this idea instead of this one? Can I teach this song this way instead of this way? Let them. The whole goal of their student teaching placement isn't to teach them to do things the same way you do, it's to help them explore their teaching style and to explore teaching music so they can be the teacher they're meant to be. So let me give you an example. My student teaching placement, when I worked with my cooperating teacher, the one who I told you had me go to lunch with her, she's an amazing music teacher. But the one thing I wish had been different 
and this was years ago, guys, okay, but the one thing I wish had been different was the fact that if I tried to change things up a bit, she didn't like it. She wanted it done her way, and I this classroom had desks in it, and the kids would sit and read textbooks, read the music from a textbook, and I am the type of teacher, I want open floor space, and I want my kids up moving and singing, and I don't want them sitting for long periods of time. And I wanted to do away with textbooks. And this is totally two different teaching styles, right? And there's nothing wrong with either approach. It's just the fact that I respected the fact that this is her classroom. This is the way she does things. She was an amazing teacher. She even earned teacher of the year as I was her student teacher. But when it came time to allowing me to do things my way, she got uncomfortable and didn't really let me. So you know what? In my head, I thought, I'm going to be respectful and still do things the way she wants me to, but I'm still going to change just a little bit up. Like when we did a movement activity, instead of having them sit on the floor, which is what she, I'd have the kids stand up. So I would just change things up here or there, not trying to be a rebel, but still (laughs) trying to implement my style a little bit into it. But I also in my head knew when I walked into my own classroom, then I would implement in my head, I would kind of in my head, take notes, but then I would also take notes and say, okay, so instead of desk, I want this. Instead of textbooks, I want to do this. Instead of sitting down to play this game, I want the kids to stand up. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with either way, but your student teacher will do the same thing with you. They're going to see your style and your way of doing things, but they're going to take notes about what they like about it, but what they don't want to do with your style as well. But on the flip side of that, don't be afraid to let them be them. I don't mean just let them come in and change everything and like take all your wall decor down and completely like say, I'm not teaching all these songs, I'm teaching these instead. No, 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 no. I'm saying if you they are implementing a lesson and they're doing the lesson you have already outlined, but they're just going to change up one or two things, let them do that. There's nothing wrong with that. Let them be them. Okay, but I want you to realize you can totally learn from your student teacher, just like they learn from you. I was blown away at the new ideas I was able to implement because of my student teachers. They and I let them know that. Oh, my gosh, like, wow, I am so amazed at how you just got the kids quiet. How did you do that? Oh, really? That's amazing. Okay, well, I'm going to start implementing that, too. I love that idea. Or, oh my gosh, I love the way you just added that little activity right there to that song. I've never thought about doing it that way. I'm going to start doing that from here on out. You will learn things from them too. So don't completely check out while they're in your room. Really kind of observe and obviously you need to observe to guide them too, but observe what they're doing to kind of learn from them too, just like they're learning from you. So number two, like I said, is all about know that they won't do things the same way you do and that's okay. Number three be patient and ask them lots of questions. Did you notice I didn't say let them ask you a lot of questions? I said ask them lots of questions. Why? I want you to think about what you do with your students. Before your students leave your music room, whether it is virtually or in person, what do you do? You usually ask what I call them bullet bullet questions. Everybody calls them something different, but basically you ask questions for understanding before the class is done. Okay, what did we learn today? Who wants to raise their hand? What, what, who was this composer we talked about today? What instrument of the orchestra did we learn about? What was the family of the orchestra instruments? Who remembers what steady beat is? What is harmony? Why did, what did we sing in harmony? Did we add an ostinato to this activity? And if we did, what was the pattern? You're asking questions for understanding. So what would you do with your student teacher? Same thing. Ask questions for understanding. Take time for reflection and conversation. Don't just assume they know the answers. Don't just assume that they left school, your school building that day, understanding everything that just went on in that classroom. Ask them. They're going to ask you questions, of course, but not all the time. Okay? So, of course, wait for them to ask you questions, but make sure you're asking them questions every single day after school. Ask them about, did you see what I did with kindergarten? Why did I do that? Why do you think I did that? And then see what they say. And then say, do you have anything you would do differently? Because you want them to think through that. What would they do in their classroom? Would they want to do it the same way you did? Are they going to want to change it up and say, awesome, okay, write that down. Keep note of that. Write down what you what you saw and write down why I did that and then write down how you're going to change it. 
let them know that it's okay to be them. I encourage you guys listening to this podcast to be uniquely you as a teacher. Every single one of you has different personalities. In the same way goes with with student teachers. They're going to have different personalities, different skill sets, different ways of doing things, different teaching styles, which we talked about earlier. And that's a good thing. The world would be boring if we had everybody doing every single thing the same way, okay? So ask them questions and don't just say, what did I do today? No. What did I do today? What did you observe? How would you change it differently in your room? Ask them that so they can think through, hmm, she's asking me to actually put my teaching style into this, okay? And then number four, model great teaching, classroom management, and the way you plan, You don't want to just ho-hum through your lessons and be like, all right, guys, today we're going to watch Beethoven Lives Upstairs. Everybody sit down, ready, go. And then just sit back there and, you know, eat your popcorn. No, you want to model some great teaching. You want them leaving, having an understanding of what's going on in your music room, why you're doing things the way you do. Model from the minute the kids walk in your room to the minute they sit down and start participating to the minute they leave. From the minute they enter your Zoom call to the minute they're participating to the minute they log off. To the minute you are sitting, like popping into their Google Classroom, to the minute they leave. You want to model that, whether it is virtually or in person. We want them to model what happens when you roll your card into a classroom to the minute you roll the card out of a classroom. What are you doing while the kiddos are learning music? Model that. Whatever your teaching situation looks like this school year, you can still model great teaching, classroom management, and the way you plan. Show them, show your student teacher and tell them about everything you're doing and explain to them why you're doing it this way. That goes back to the asking questions, but same, same thing about asking questions is you're modeling it. Tell them, don't just ask them questions about do they understand, but model it. Say, hey, I taught this this way to this particular third grade class, but I taught this lesson a little bit different to this other third grade class because... This class has more special needs learners. This class has some behavior issues. This class is just a little bit more squirrely than the other class. Whatever it might be, explain to them why the lesson looks similar but not the same. Why did you change it up a little bit? And tell them about it. Explain everything you're doing. If your classroom management approach is a little bit different from class to class or grade level to grade level, explain why. Why are you planning the way you're planning? Why is your lesson plan template the way it is? Why is the way you're planning it and outlining your lessons the way it looks? Do you have certain requirements that your particular school building or your your principal is asking you to put in your lessons? Did you develop your lesson plans or did you did somebody else develop it for like did you find it somewhere else is what I'm saying not that somebody develop it for you. Did are you using a particular curriculum or following a curriculum map or did you develop your own? Explain all these things to your student teacher. There's so many things like, you know, hello, I just wrote a whole book about it. If you have not gotten it, <laughs> just make a note what you really need to know about teaching elementary music. You can find it on Amazon or Flat Books. But what I was going to say is in that book, I talk about that. All the things you didn't know in college. Nobody told me about the fact that I would maybe have to develop my own curriculum out because my school wouldn't have any curriculum to follow. There was no Quaver music at the time. Quaver music, if you're listening, I'm a huge advocate. I love what you're doing. Okay? But I'm saying when I started teaching, there was no online curriculum, nothing. No online curriculum. There were old textbooks in my classroom. That was it. I didn't have anything else. And so I think it's amazing now. Teacher Pay Teacher came out after I started teaching, by the way, as well. I'm kind of aging myself here, but you know what I mean. There. So what I'm getting at is explain this to your student teachers. You may end up in a school where you don't have anybody else's plans to follow. There was no anything left for you by the previous teacher because there wasn't a previous teacher. Or you may come into a school where they've adopted so many amazing online curriculums, in-person curriculums, and you just have this like laid out for you on a golden platter ready to follow. It's amazing. Awesome. Makes it easy for them. Or you may end up having that stuff, but you kind of still want to make the plans your own and to adjust and adapt based on your teaching personality and your teaching style. You may want to pull from a bunch of different approaches and that's okay too. But like I said, model it and show them. Classroom management, teaching, and the way you plan. Going from college classes or practicums to a full student teaching experience is overwhelming. Seeing things in a textbook, reading about it online, or even just having an instructor explain it is different than seeing it put into motion. 
So although your student teachers have learned about all these things in college, they still seeing it put in emotion and having you model and explain it to them. That is when I learned the most about being a music teacher. Out of four years of college, I did a four and a half year degree plan because if you've listened to my story, I started as a piano performance major and then moved to music ed. But anyways, by four years of college, my student teaching experience was in the half year after. And that half of a semester, that little half of a semester, not the full semester, that half of a semester in my elementary music teaching placement is where I learned the most about being an elementary music teacher out of any of my college classes. So that's a lot of weight on your shoulder, though, isn't it? As a cooperating teacher, you're like, oh, my gosh, like, I'm literally the one helping prepare the student teacher for their music teaching placement. But don't be so overwhelmed. Just keep doing what you're doing. Keep teaching, keep showing up, keep figuring things out. And if you, your student teacher is coming to you during this crazy COVID school year, and you're like, I literally am so overwhelmed. I don't even know how to, like, how to get through everything every day. Explain that to them. Say, hey, you know what? I'm overwhelmed. This is how I'm feeling. And this is why. In a regular school year, this is what I would normally be doing. Here's how I have adjusted my plans. Here's how, here's how I have adjusted my classroom management system. Here's how I've adjusted my planning. I'm having to teach students in person and online at the same time. Here's how I'm doing it. Show them. Because, I mean, we, of course, don't want these student teachers to have to experience that kind of teaching. But if they do, they never know what's going to be handed to them. They don't know if they're going to get a virtual teaching position. They don't know. So try to prepare them, whatever your teaching situation looks like, show them how you would normally do things in a regular school year, how you've had to adapt and adjust and shift things a little bit based on your teaching situation this school year, and then explain to them how you do that. How did you figure out how to do those things? What particular trainings did you go to? How did you find an online community? What teacher besties did you make to help you get through this? What did you have to think through in order to make these plans? So when they not if, but when they experience, because they're going to have curveballs thrown their way. It may not always look like COVID, but they're going to have curveballs thrown their way as a music teacher. And whatever it might look like, they need to be able to adapt and adjust. And they're going to have those words ringing in their ears one day when they're in their own classrooms of what you said to them to help guide them and shape them. And number five, start with having them observe, then co-teach, and then they can take over. Look at their lesson plans ahead of time to give them feedback, but be honest with them about how you want this to feel like their classroom. So even when they're just at first observing you teach, have them take notes, maybe develop a template that they can just fill out about what they observed. Maybe tell them, here's what I want you to really observe from this lesson a day. Maybe for this 45 minutes, instead of focusing on from the minute the kids come in to the minute they leave, I want you to focus on this particular body percussion activity. Really observe what I do, see how I prepare the students, see the questions I asked them about what we did the class period before when I saw them last week, and then see how I instruct them, model it, teach it, and then what we do after it. How do we move it to two instruments? Have them, whatever that might be. I use that as an example, but have them observe particular things from lessons and let them know ahead of time what you want them to observe. And then when they start co-teaching and then they take over completely, like I said, look at their lesson plans, give them some feedback, explain to them that it's okay to make mistakes, that lessons are not always going to go as planned and share experiences about you that you've had that that have happened with that exact experience. Share with them that this is a normal thing, that lesson planning looking like it is on paper will not always translate well as you're trying to implement and teach the lessons. Maybe they've already watched you (laughs) teach a particular lesson to a particular grade level that kind of bonded and didn't go the right way. And tell them, you know what, this did not go great, but here's what I'm going to do next time. Be vulnerable, just like I've told you guys to be vulnerable with your students. Have them see you make mistakes and not be perfect. That's okay. The same thing goes with your student teacher. They're not expecting to see a perfect teacher. They want to just see that if you do mess up or something doesn't go right in your classroom, tell them what you could have done differently or this is why this was an off day or an off class period and here's how I plan to shift and adjust for next time. It's normal and tell them that it's normal for lessons to not always go great. 
It's normal for things that they planned to not always go well and how that's still the case for you and really tell them that. So when they get into teaching, as you know, first year of teaching is ridiculously hard. So they're not constantly second guessing themselves and being too hard on themselves. But when a lesson doesn't go well, tell them it's always a learning experience and a way for them to improve and to really think through what what happened here, to really reflect and then don't just check out when they take over teaching, when they take over the classroom, the first, you know, the last two to three weeks, but be there to observe, monitor your students because this is still your classroom after all, and to help transitioning the students out and back into your classroom. Really be there to observe. So if you need to, you know, hop in and talk to a particular student, you can do that. If they need some real-time feedback or maybe they get stuck and they that will happen sometimes, you're there to guide them and help them and to remind them of what's going on and remind them, hey, remember, we need to stop five minutes early because this class needs to get out on time. Um, just be there to help them with however you can, okay? And then I want to close by saying this. When your student teacher leaves their student teaching assignment, they should feel ready to go into their first teaching position. But with that said, let them know that they can continue asking you questions as they get started, that you're still there to support them however you can. Yes, you may end up having a new student teacher. Yes, you're going to be busy teaching. Yes, you're not going to have time to email them back all the time right away. But let them know every once in a while, shoot me an email or send me a text and ask me if you feel stuck about something because I'd love to still be a mentor for you. So with that said, I hope that this episode has helped you with knowing what to do with a student teacher and how to help them thrive as they are in your classroom. You guys have an amazing rest of your week and I will see you soon. Bye. Well, hey there. Thank you so much for listening into the elementary music teacher podcast. There is an exclusive Facebook group just for listeners of this podcast and any elementary music teacher called the Elementary Music Teacher Community Facebook group. Come on over and join us there where we have conversations around the podcast episodes and encourage each other each and every week. And also head to my website, thedomesticmusician.com. I have some free resources there that you can download to help you gain traction in your classroom today, as well as the blog and the membership site and all kinds of other goodies to help you keep going in your music teaching journey. I cannot wait to keep connecting with you and encourage Encouraging you and spurring you on in your journey of teaching elementary music. Hang in there, have an amazing week, and I will see you soon.